Hi, Chris Good here, and uh, here's another video in the series talking about how to make electric guitars in Fusion 360 and on a CNC milling machine. The last video was rather long. We uh, created the body of the guitar, and um, then we went to the manufacturer side and we created some tool pads. But what I didn't show you in that video was how to um, process these tool pads so that uh, you can run them on a CNC machine. So I want to do that right now. Uh, what we ended up with last time was three tool paths. One of them cut out the pockets, right? Another one cut out the holes uh, for the strings going through the body and to bolt the neck on. And the last one was a contour cut that just cuts around the perimeter of the body. And we played with tabs in this as well. Just to remember that I decided not to use tabs on this because I know the body's going to be firmly taped down using this awesome carpet tape that we get um, here at a, a local big box hardware store. And I'll make sure to link to that in the notes. Uh, what I didn't say before was how are we going to um, export this into a G code that the CNC can understand. And I want to do that in a really quick video here. It works like this. Um, you could just highlight all of these and create one G-code file. It would have two tool changes in it because it's going to do them in the order in which you see here. It's going to first do this, these pockets, which have that quarter inch diameter bit. These pockets have an, are, uh, sorry, these holes are cut with an eighth inch bit, and this goes back to the quarter inch. So um, what we could do is sort of move that up, and we could export all of this as... Um, a single tool path and at the end of this 2d contour it would prompt us for a tool change um, and then the machine would pause it would spin down and we we change the bit and then restart the G code um, which you can do no problem but my practice is that I have separate um, paths separate G code files for different bits. So what I'm going to do is export these that both use the quarter inch bit as one tool path and it's going to, the machine's going to run it and complete it and it'll be done. And then I'll just load a different tool path after I change the bit over to the eighth inch one. Um, you know, but do, do whatever workflow makes sense for you. Once you have things up and running, you, it might be faster if you're really going into production to uh, run all three of these and have a, have a tool change. But, you know, go through the workflow and make sure it makes sense for you. I'm going to do these two, I'm going to highlight these two tool paths as one uh, operation. And the way that we're going to convert it to G-code is using what's called a post processor. So if you go down here to post process, it opens up this dialog box, relatively simple. And you can choose what CNC that you have right, what control software you're using for your CNC, um, and they've got lots of different things up here. So they have things for um, a Tor Mach Path Pilot. They have things for Win CNC. Uh, they have things, uh, you can import one that will do it to Easel, which is um, a pretty popular uh, control software as well. We use Mach 3 on our CNC at Decatur Makers, and um, that's the software we use to control the thing we built from the plans we got at Joe's CNC, and I'll link to that in the notes as well. So I'm gonna select Mach 3 mil. Um, there's lots of different properties if you uh, pull this tab down, and through trial and error, we found that the only thing you need to change for our CNC, the way that it's set up to use Mach 3, um, is if this button is checked, uh, G28 safer tracks. Um, this raises the bit to a safe distance as the first one, one of the earliest um, operations in, in the G code file. And we found that it just runs into our Z plus limit switch and uh, it stops the machine. So we uncheck that. That's just our workflow at Decatur Makers using the Joe CNC. Um, but you know, you should use what, what works for yours. So I'm in post process. I've chosen my post processor. I've made sure G28 safer tracks is unchecked and I'm going to press OK. And um, it's going to say, hey, well, why don't we uh, save it here? And you can name it. It comes out as a tap file. You'll have to make sure you're searching for files with that extension when you open the dialog in 
um, Mach 3. I'm going to say this is um, the quarter inch body cuts. All right. And then we'll just do this one as well. Do the same thing. Uh, post process. Once you uncheck this, it defaults to uncheck it for all, all the rest of the ones um, until you change something. And this will be the eighth inch. I'm just reminding myself that it's the eighth inch bit, I put it in the file name, um, and I'm cutting out the holes. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we talked about last time how to do a little preview of all of this. I found that um, the machining time estimates are really quite close to what it actually takes, unlike in some other programs like VCarve. Um, so for with the quarter inch bits, it's a 45 minute cut. Allow a few minutes for the uh, bit change, and then there's another 22 minutes. So we're looking at, at over an hour uh, to cut out the thing, but when you're done, you're going to have this cool guitar body. Okay, that's it for this time. We'll see you in the next step.